Uh, welcome to our uh, Nova Store and also Pop Top Companies webinar. And today we will have some information to share with everyone. Now let's invite our lecturer, Mr. Dog and Mr. Christian to give us some sharing. Let's welcome. Virtual applause. Are we unmuted? We are unmuted. Okay, so hello. Thank you, Nelson. Uh, thank you everyone for logging on. Uh, Nelson asked if we might spend some time doing a webinar explaining some great feature of a Nova product. And uh, I discussed it with Christian and we decided um, some other tricks that we might like the Nova user base to be aware of. And uh, we talked about using the Stream Deck uh, control pad to control the Nova uh, suite of products. And Christian is going to spend a little time telling you what the advantage of that is. Uh, Nelson didn't love the idea at first, did you, Nelson? Because it's not a, uh, a Nova product. And I explained that if, uh, if this format here, the, the Nova webinar, um, series is a good source of information then uh, it'll draw it'll draw people and become more popular and um, he can be a great source of information and therefore uh, become a more important brand in the in the marketplace more important than they already are so first of all thank you for being open to that Nelson and thank you for the opportunity and here's Christian to tell you about uh, the stream deck and I I'm going to be camera number two, camera operator. Thank you. All right, thank you, Doug. Um, so as Doug uh, kind of started to tell you, what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be working with a, a product by Elgato called the Stream Deck. Um, by itself, um, the Stream Deck is an interesting product. A lot of people use it for, a lot of gamers for online streaming and whatnot. Um, what it is, it's a little USB control pad that uh, talks to your computer and allows it to control different functions. What really makes it useful to the, here, just a quick <laughs> look so at it so you know what we're talking about. About. Yeah. Um, there are different models of this. This is the regular Stream Deck. Uh, there's also an XL version, which just has more buttons. So in its simplest form, uh, by itself, the Stream Deck allows you to control different functions on your computer a nice simple interface, you know, so you don't have to have a, a window open to start streaming or something. You can assign buttons and make them do what you want. Um, the thing that's really neat in our case uh, is a piece of software called Companion. Uh, what Companion is, it's a open source software that extends the functionality of the Stream Deck and allows it to talk to a large number of uh, AV devices or any device really that that can take commands um, over network. Um, what we're doing today is we're going to be demonstrating how you can use the Stream Deck with Companion to uh, talk to a Novastar product. However, there's uh, built-in support for many different manufacturers of all types of different equipment. Um, a lot of people use these for a, a Blackmagic uh, ATEM switcher, for example. Um, the, the, the limits are kind of endless and they're constantly um, coming out with new modules, they call them, or plugins that allow it to talk to different pieces of gear. Um, and being an open source community, um, they kind of, it's a collaborative effort, you know. So if somebody has a piece of gear that they want to incorporate into their setup, you know, they will, they can work with the developer to, to, you know, establish a set of commands to work with that. So just real quick, I'm going to take you to, Show you what we're talking about here. Hold on one second. So, what you're seeing here, uh, this is just the the website for the product. As I said, it's made by Elgato, um, and you can see there are different versions of it. The one we're using today is the Stream Deck. However, and this has uh, 15 buttons on it but there's also the Stream Deck Mini and the Stream Deck XL. Um, 
and we can uh, we can include these links uh, to this. I'll, I'll include the links at the end to how to get the software. Um, so the the piece of software we use to talk to the Stream Deck is called Companion, and you can find that at bitfocus.io is the name of the website, and that's where you can download uh, the software itself. It does require you to uh, set up an account. Um, the software is free, but they just want you to log in to um, to download their software. So they can invite you to their webinars. So they can invite you to their webinars. That's correct. <laughs> um, and there's uh, right now I'm, I'm running this on my Mac, but there is a Mac version. There's a Windows version. And there's also a Linux version, which you can run on uh, a Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's a project I'm working on at home. Um, it's kind of it's kind of neat, you know. You don't really have to have a computer devoted to uh, running this companion software. You can run it on a Raspberry Pi, and you know it, it just simplifies your setup quite a bit and a nice little footprint. So that's a little bit outside the bounds of uh, you know what we're going to cover today. But you know what we'll be doing today is showing you the uh, the Mac version. So what you do is you create an account and you know. Uh, download and install the software, which I've already done. And let's see here. Just on my desktop, one second. And so, what what the software does when you when you start it for the first time, it just kind of runs in the background. And wow, this is delayed. I don't know why you're still seeing my desktop there. But there's a little icon, um, which I just clicked on. Hopefully, it'll come up on in the stream in a minute here. But it's a, it's a program that runs in the background and is controlled uh, via a built-in web server. That's how you configure everything and, and uh, get, get it running. So after I've installed Companion, I just opened it up. And I'm presented with this window here. And we want to launch the GUI. And I've already, can everybody see my desktop all right? Or is it, yeah, looks OK. And I had started something before, so I'm going to, we're going, I'm going to start over here. But so what we're looking at here, this is the, uh, the interface for the software. And what you can do, or, or the first thing you do, is you add in the different pieces of hardware that you want to control. Um, in this instance, uh, we're just talking some to Novastar. Uh, we're, we're using a Nova Pro HD for this for, the, for this test. So honestly, the easiest way to do it, um, click on the little search tab there. We're just going to start typing in Nova. And as you can see, uh, the different products that it can currently talk to uh, come up in a list there. Um, and right now, as I said, I have the Nova Pro HD. So I'm going to add that. And now it's asking what is the IP address that it's that our processor is set to. Um, in our little network here, it is set to 10.0.0.120. And for whatever reason, uh, there's a little, there's some little quirkiness in the software and even though I added Nova Pro HD, it's still asking me to select the model here. So I need to select Nova Pro HD again. Can I interrupt you for a second? Sure. Um, is, is this something Nova gave them uh, the, the handles to for their software or do individuals kind I of- I think, well, some, some manufacturers do give the control protocol, but a lot of it is done by users on their own, yeah. kind of reverse, you know, and finding out the protocols that different pieces of hardware speak. Right. So that's where the, the large uh, user base comes in when somebody requests a, a certain type of uh, equipment to be, you know, to, to communicate with that. Somebody might say, oh, I have that laying around. Let me see what I can figure out, you right. know. So at the moment, I believe these Novastar modules are the result of the uh, user base um, kind of working through it and, and finding out the correct protocols. Yeah. So now that I've typed in the IP address and I've selected the type uh, of processor there, I do apply changes. And you could also, you know, if you wanted to add some other things, uh, 
one thing it's really, I, I like to use this for bright sign players, which is a little digital signage player. So you just start typing something in, bright sign player. Um, you know, if you want to scroll by category, you know, you, you can see there's, there's a whole lot of stuff that, that this will talk to. And it really just keeps getting bigger all the time. Um, as I mentioned, a lot of people uh, use it for uh, controlling an ATEM switcher. Um, hold on, I see a question there in the chat. Let me uh, see what that says. I don't know if I can. Uh, what IP address is that from One Pro HD? What IP address is that? Uh, well, the Nova Pro, the IP address you're using is just set to an address of 10.0.0.120. .0 .0 the address that's, that's up in the menu bar here that's, that we're currently looking at, this is the IP address of my computer. And we don't really need to know that. It's just uh, when you have the, the companion software open and you hit the launch GUI button, that will actually open your browser to the right IP address. And this software runs on port 8000. So that's kind of built into the shortcut of, uh, of starting the software. Um, so we've added our Nova star. Now we can go ahead and start setting up some buttons. So I click the buttons tab here. And what we're looking at is kind of an empty grid. And you'll notice there's some uh, different colors here into the, the, the buttons. Um, the first, there's uh, six buttons in the upper left that just have white surrounding them. That would, that's kind of your template for if you were using the Stream Deck Mini. Ours has 15 buttons, it's the regular one. So our buttons are the, the gray. So we see five buttons by three buttons. And the XL, um, if you had that, you would have this full uh, uh, screen full of buttons to work with. So what we do is we just wanna, we set up each button one at a time and we tell it you know, what we want that button to do. So we're gonna start with this upper left button here. And first step, let me just get rid of this menu here. Uh, set button type. And there's, there's a lot of functionality in this software that we're not going to touch on, but uh, in, the, in its simplest form, we're just adding a, a regular button. Um, and the first set of buttons we're going to do, we're going to do some input control. Um, we're going to create some buttons that will tell the Nova Pro to switch between DVI, HDMI, SDI, and DisplayPort. So the first thing it's asking for is text. And what this is, this is the title of the, or what we want to call this button. So we're going to call it DVI. Um, next to where we type that in, there's a little thing that says font size. By default, this is set to auto. Personally, I don't like the way it looks. Uh, it shows up really big there. And say if we had a display port, you know, it would try to fit that. It would show up as a much smaller font. So. Just for aesthetics, I like to switch this. I'm gonna make all my buttons 18 point. Um, show them how it's coming up on the, the actual We can, I'll, I'll get to that. So as, I mean, what you can't see right now is I have my Stream Deck plugged in and we're seeing this happen in real time on the Stream Deck. Um, so I just made that one button. I haven't told, I haven't given it any commands yet. I've just kind of uh, set the design of the button. So now is when we tell it, where we tell it what we want that button to do. So there's key down actions. So when that means when this button is pushed, we want it to. And so once we hit the drop down boxes, there's all kinds of internal functions to the stream deck that we could have it control, but we're actually wanting it to talk to a piece of gear. So since I set that Nova Pro up in that, that last step, if I keep scrolling down, I see some different commands that we can send to the Nova Pro. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to use a change input command. And in this case, oh, it's already filled out for us, DVI. So when I hit that button, it's gonna to switch to DVI. Um, don't have to save anything. There's no apply button. It just kind of all happens uh, as you're doing it. So next thing, we're gonna do an HDMI button. So same thing, set button type, regular. HDMI. As you can see, since it's on auto, the text is a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to switch it to 18 point. Same thing. We want it to 
uh, control and action on the Nova Pro. So we scroll down to Nova, to Nova Pro or Nova Star, change input. But this time we want to switch HDMI. All right, uh, next we'll do display port. So button type, regular. And see, but with the auto font there, auto text size, it kind of just made it a little bit ugly, so. Um, another thing you can do with this, if you, you know, you can really start to get fancy and you can, I mean, you can change the color on these buttons. You can um, use, if you have a, a icon files, you can set these to actually have a picture on it. Um, but in this particular scenario, we're just, you know, talking to the Nova Pro and just these simple commands, it's just easier to have a, a, a text rather than have it be a, a picture. So just for fun, let's go back and we'll, we'll change some of these colors at least. So I don't know why I'm going with the hot pink colors, but it's kind of what came up. It goes with the purple background. So I made some uh, input buttons. Uh, all right, let's 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 add some other controls in here now. Um, let's add some brightness commands. Um, and the way this module is set up for the Novastar processors, it kind of sends some preset commands. It's not like there's a a brightness up button or a brightness down button. There's just different, uh, like three percent, five percent, ten percent. So we can set up a button to send a. And you set that here. Yep, we yeah. set that here. So and are you able to change that variable? We are not. I mean, that's that's something that might get introduced in, in further versions of the software. Yeah. But uh, whoever developed this module, um, they just kind of went with a preset, you know, different set of numbers as to what you can assign the brightness. Will I completely ruin your groove if I ask you a, a left of center question? Sure. We so we're, we're kind of deep into how you configure this and how you use it. Oh, God. Um, but maybe you could talk for a minute about what what application, why you would want to control the Nova Pro HD sure. remotely. Sort yeah. Of. So uh, many different reasons. I mean, the easiest way is, you know, a lot of people, you have your processing kind of located at the screen location. You know, you have your processing rack located you know, behind the screen or somewhere inaccessible. And usually you're sending video to that rack, say from, from front of house somewhere. Um, okay, well, say you want to adjust brightness. Uh, you're at front of house, but you don't want to go back and, you know, trip over stuff backstage and, you know, and, and try to access the processor that way. Sometimes it's nice just to have a quick access to, you know. Uh, it's nice when we're able to set processor right next to us but that's right. not always correct the case so um how do you connect to it is it via um it's it's Wi-Fi? no it's over network so in our in our uh demonstration case here it's very simple i have my laptop and i have the nova pro and they're both plugged into a network switch but as long as you have your your, your laptop and the Nova Pro or whatever process you're using have to be on the same network. Yeah. And that's what I did when I, you know, when I started setting it up and asked for the IP address yeah. of the, so, I mean, any piece of gear you want to talk to, whether it's Nova star or something else, um, it has to be on an IP address that um, you, you can hit from this computer. You can uh, configure that to control two different pieces of gear. Oh, absolutely. Um, on the same keypad. Yeah. So that's the beauty of it yeah. too, is like you can have, uh, all sorts of different, you know, right. uh, gear you're talking to. You can set macros up too. Like, so. Okay, here's one for mm -hmm. you. Um, not that our screens ever, you know, not that Nova would ever fail because it's a very reliable, beautiful piece of gear. But we often set, um, you know, backup yeah. processors and. I've been removed for so long. No, they... We haven't done a gig in a while, people. <laughs> um, and uh, so it, is this a case where you could set a button to just switch process? No, because, uh, I mean, usually your backup is running all the time. And it's, it's running, uh, 
you're never really switching between the two. Like gotcha. a properly configured backup is just something that, that takes over automatically. Um, but you know, your source that was, thanks for making me look sorry. <laughs> Doug, Doug, has, Doug doesn't do many shows anymore. So, um, but one thing you could do, like say you had a, a media server line, uh, going through a matrix that is feeding your, your Nova processor. Um, you could set a button up on here that talks to your, your matrix and say something goes wrong. You could have a, you know, backup button and that backup button could be set to change, uh, you know, the input to your Nova processor from your main line to your, uh, your backup line. Um, Stream Deck, I'm just looking at a question here. Stream Deck, a standalone version, the PC. Um, you actually do need to have the computer uh, to run it. Um, the Stream Deck itself is just a USB device. Um, and that plugs into the computer. But he's saying, is it PC only? No, no. no it's not PC only. So. It's it's Mac, uh, Windows, or uh, uh, Raspberry Pi. I mean, it's just um, it, it's a web-based tool, um, and it's just different versions of it, you know, for the different operating systems. Uh, back to where you were. Um, where was I? Where was I? So, I was kind of talk. We were kind of talking about like if you're at front of house and you wanted to, you know and your processing rack was backstage. That, that's kind of the reason for doing it uh, with the Stream Deck. But as I started to get into, you can create all kinds of complicated macros. So this DVI button, right now, we just have it to change the input on DVI. But we could have, say we had a, a, a bright sign player, any, a media server. We could have a button that uh, plays a certain piece of media um, and at the same time, switches an input on your image pro, your your or your processor, whatever you want it to be. Um, sorry, here. Uh, yes, so you have to run the PC and the Stream Deck every time. Um, the the Stream Deck the, the Stream Deck software on the PC um, is not it's not a, a processor intensive. It doesn't really eat up a lot of resources on your computer. Um, oh, JP, yes, I'm going to talk about the emulator soon. Um, another, actually, I'll bring it up now. Another neat thing about the software is I don't even need to be using this, this Stream Deck de device. Like, say I didn't own a Stream Deck. I could still uh, be using this companion software. Um, and what it does after I've set it up, there's some little features here. Uh, we have web buttons, emulator, and mobile, mobile buttons. So the mobile buttons here. What this is doing is this is giving us a representation of what we just set up. Um, and this is the, we're looking at the Stream Deck XL size. That's why we see all these buttons. But this URL that it's, it's pointing at right here, if you were to put this into your phone or tablet, you would see this display here, just like a, a web page. And these buttons work the same way as, as if you're looking at them on the Stream Deck. So even if you don't have the physical hardware here, you could set this up to do stuff. Do stuff. Not sure what, what Christian Camus is confused about. But maybe, maybe we can get into a QA and a at the end with the actual uh, yep. audio. So... And what I've actually done is I kind of set some buttons up a little bit earlier and we can, you know, I've set them up uh, some different brightness commands. And actually we'll do one of these real quick. We'll reset it up. So let's do a brightness 100% command. So set button type. So under our key down actions, we go to our Nova star, change brightness. And here is where I was talking about the preset um, brightness levels they have set up for this module. So they kind of go every 5%. So let's go with the brightness 
and we'll make a brightness 50%. So we'll do that the next button over. So we'll call it bright. Set it smaller text size and we'll choose Nova Star change brightness and we'll do 50%. Okay, so that's all the buttons I'm gonna set up for now. Um, but just so you can see that we're actually gonna, this actually works, we'll do a little camera shot and you can see me uh, kind of switching between these different devices. So give me a second here, I'm gonna to try to bring up a second camera. our camera guy here. So here's the actual buttons on the stream deck that we just set up. And that mirrors what I have, you know, on that web page on the computer. So our DVI button. Um, I don't know if you can get both the... So as I hit the DVI button, you're going to see that it changes inputs to DVI. Look, it works. I'm not making this up, it actually works. Um, display port, it didn't work. I set my button up wrong. So let's see what's going on there. And the reason it's doing that is I forgot to put a command in. Start change input, display port. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. I mean, there's no like updating configuration. This all kind of happens live. So now that I've done that, in theory, when I hit the display port button, it switches over to display port. HDMI, UVI. Now for brightness. Um, right now, if you look at our processor, we're set at a uh, hundred percent. Um, I set up one button for fifty percent. So if I hit that button you see that it jumped back down to 50%. Um, this, this could be pretty helpful in an install. Well. Yes, this could be, Doug just mentioned, I don't know if you heard, but uh, in an Good. install scenario, let me turn the screen off here. For all you integrators out there. Yeah, in an install, I mean, ah, this is not what I'm trying to share, I apologize. Um, you know, in an install, you could have this set up uh, as part of your system. Say you had a fairly large integration for all kinds of different gear. Um, you could make some really simple buttons that the lights end, on, lights, lights off, on, screen, lights off, like audio up, audio down, brightness, it, daytime mode. Exactly. I mean, one command that can turn your projector on. And it says that right there on the button. Yeah. It, it takes the staff stupidity out of the you know, exactly. do this, do this, do this, do this. There's none of that. It's just one daytime mode. Push. Right. And I mean, you can get really advanced with the way you set your buttons up. So um, you can set it up so that you push, uh, say, turn, say you have a button that says start system. Like you push that button, it turns your projector on, it brings your screen down. And then it could take you to a different uh, page of buttons on your controller. So like you could have a, this page that it jumps to now is, okay, what do you want to send to the screen? Um, so there's all kinds of, you know, uh, different options to jump around in the, in the software itself. Um, let's see here. Should we uh, go to the uh, Q and A or do you still have yeah, um, let me just show one. I mean, we'll, we'll, okay. I want to cover the different pieces yep. of the software a little bit. Um, yeah. One thing I showed you a second ago was this thing called mobile buttons, you know, and if we were to take this URL and plug it into uh, an iPhone or a tablet that we had on the network, 
you know, this could be our little mini control system without even using uh, the USB Stream Deck device. Um, so more ways to control. More ways to Nova. control. Nova with, or with an iOS or right, an Android. Exactly. Yeah. It's just a, a web page. Um, you even have this fancy little emulator tab that you can give yourself, you know, this is exactly what the Stream Deck looks like. Be although mine is only, you know, the the regular one. Do you have video going? Let me let me ask. If everyone could uh, kind of this is a poll, but we're not gonna use a poll. You're just gonna answer in your chat. Were you aware of this product or, or are you using it? So I just like to see who we're speaking to when it comes to the folks out here today. Where's your chat window? Yes and yes. Next time. I haven't heard of it. It's, uh, I think they, I mean, I don't know how long the Stream Deck itself has been around, but the companion software um, really started to become, come into play around a year ago. Um, and since then, it's... All the cool kids are using it. All the cool kids are using it. You notice yeah. a lot of people have these at shows now. Um, and there's a Facebook, uh, there's a couple of Facebook groups of like-minded AV professionals that, um, you know, have show how they use it in their setups or or, you know, just different ideas. It's, it's a very versatile piece of gear. Um, it's, you know, it is what you make of it. I mean, in this case, we just set up some very simple buttons, but you can really almost create a whole control program using just the, uh, this companion software. Um, what else can we talk about here? <laughs> um, you can have multiple uh, devices plugged in. So say I had another Stream Deck, um, I could plug it in, it's just a USB device. Um, and you plug it in, rescan USB. So you could have two, two different sets of buttons going the whole time. Um, so I mentioned a minute ago, uh, you know, you can use different, you can use a Windows machine, you can use a Mac, um, you can use Raspberry Pi. Um, and that's a kind of a neat way of doing it, you know, for a, a just a simple $40, $50 device, you don't need to have a computer every time. You just set it up on your Pi. It doesn't even, doesn't even need to have a screen, you know, because once you get it set up properly on your Raspberry Pi, it's just running a little web server like it's doing on my computer here. Um, and so you're not really eating a computer just to do it. Um, my current setup, uh, I have a Raspberry Pi with this. It's a little kit I carry around. So it's kind of a self-contained thing. I don't need to use a computer um, at all. Uh, is this a push-only device? That is an interesting question. Uh, it does have the ability to read back status, status from different types of devices. Status, all right, we'll go with status. Um, Nova is not one of those devices at the moment, but if we go to instances, say we had a Blackmagic um, switcher. Some of these modules are a little more complex and they can actually read back status from your piece of equipment and reflect it on the button. So say if you have on a, on a switcher, for example, where you have a preview in a program bus, um, you could set your buttons up. So when you hit one of the source buttons, Light it lights up green. Yeah. When you hit the take button, it's reading back that status and then that'll change the button to, to red in that particular case. It's basically, it's a product and a software suite built so that the technician can design the gear the way he or she wants to use it, not the way the brilliant engineers at the manufacturers decided was the best and only way to use it, which is kind of cool. Um, I think at this point, uh, kind of go back to some more Q&A. If anybody has any more questions, they want to. Yeah, that's what I answered with. Yeah. Uh, 
yes, you can use, uh, you can control multiple Nova Pros. It's just a matter of each device uh, being on a different uh, IP address. Um, granted, I only have one Nova Pro connected now, but let's say we wanted to add a second one. It's just as simple as adding that second one under instances, uh, putting the IP address in. Granted, this doesn't exist. We'll just say 10.0.0.99. And it's, it's not going to give me any kind of reading here under status because there's nothing plugged in at that IP address. It knows that it's talking to uh, the first Novastar. You see that the status is okay there. Um, but we've set it up to be able to talk to a second one. So if we go here in buttons, say we wanted this bottom left button to talk to a different Novastar processor. Uh, just do set button type regular button. And this is where it's a little confusing. Um, I probably, when I added that, set, oh, it's calling it Novastar 2. But I could have, when I set that instance up, I could have given it a different name. But, you know, to, to make it easier to, to discern, you know, as you're picking it. But here it's just called Novastar 2 and works just like the other one. I mean, we're just, it's just talking to a, a different IP address. Any, yeah, anybody, uh, any other questions for now? That's kind of all I, um... We think we're at the end of the show there, Nelson. <laughs> Okay, so thanks for Mr. Christian and Mr. Douglas Sherry. Oh, Mr. Randy asked what is the latency? Um, good question. Minimal? <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of irrelevant. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really quick. I mean, if you had a lot of gear on your network, maybe, uh, I mean, it's, it's a split second. It's less it almost seems like the real buttons on, on the unit, so. It's quick. It's, it is very quick. Before we wrap up there, Nelson, I just also just want to say thank you for uh, for being open to showing your customers uh, someone else's trick uh, and how to use it with the the Nova Care, Nova Care, the Nova Star products. Um, okay. Uh, I, I think uh, I think everyone, you know, whether it's this product or anything else that interacts, um, most of your customers are technicians or integrators that uh, that deal with a wide suite of equipment and anything you can do to to help their uh, their day go a little easier is, is going to be appreciated. So I know we were the ones that threw the idea at you, but but thanks for being open to it because I, I know it wasn't a pure Nova moment, but uh, maybe maybe the folks on here can uh, also thank you for being open to that. Come on, people. Thank them. <laughs> okay. Okay, thanks, Mr. Doc. And uh, so... Point, I mean, we'd like some walkout music, Nelson, when we're finished. <laughs> okay. Okay, good. Okay, so thanks. Since, uh, thanks for your call to the webinar of Nova Star and the Pop Top Company. So today our meeting uh, webinar is uh, finished, and uh, so we will end here. So thank you, everyone. Virtual claps. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you.